In today's video, we are going to go over an example problem for the velocity selector. But before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, support my channel, click the notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and share this video. And just that, I've made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website, whether you're looking for like example problems, notes, practice problems, some online activities, as you can see. I have all that at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And of course, I made other videos for this topic, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Well, this is our velocity selector. We have our negatively charged plate, our positively charged plate, and we have a proton which is positively charged, and we're going to assume that that proton is selected for the right velocity, and it's going to travel straight through our velocity selector, which has a potential difference across those plates of 1,000 volts. The distance between the plates is 4 centimeters, and that, uh, that proton has a velocity of 2.0 times 10 to 7 meters per second. Okay, we're going to do all of this in this video. We're going to calculate the electric field strength. We're going to determine the direction, the magnetic field. We're going to calculate the magnetic field strength. We're going to calculate the force from the electric field and the magnetic field on that proton. We're going to show the path of the proton if it had a velocity greater than 2.0 times 10 to 7 meters per second. And we're going to see if we would take the proton and change it for an electron, would that electron make it straight through if it had the same velocity in the same fields? That is going to be fascinating, so don't go anywhere. The first part of the problem is, though, of course, what is the electric field strength? Then we have positive and negatively charged plates. The electric field, as you know, goes from positive to negative. And if we want to calculate the strength of that field, we can use this equation, which says that the voltage across the plates is equal to the electric field strength times the distance. We can solve that equation for the electric field strength E. That's just the voltage divided by the distance. The voltage is going to be uh, 1.0 times 10 to the third volts. The distance must be changed into meters, so it's 1.0. No, it's not 1.0. It's 0.04 meters. 0.04 meters, and that's 4 centimeters, and you get that the electric field has a strength of 25,000 volts per meter, or 2.5 times 10 to the 4 volts per meter, okay? Numero uno is done. Number two now says the direction of the magnetic field. Now, we got to figure out the direction of the magnetic field because that proton, when it enters that velocity selector in its current state without the magnetic field, it's going to be traveling through and it only has, the velocity selector only has an electric field. So the proton is going to feel a force, the electric force, and that is going to be in the upward direction it's going to be repelled by this plate and attracted by this plate, which has an opposite charge as the positively charged proton. So in order for that proton to travel straight through that velocity selector, we're going to need an offsetting force in the opposite direction, but has to have an equal magnitude, the force. And that is going to come from our electric field, which we're going to call that force the Lorentz force. We didn't know how we're going to orient the magnetic field, so it will give that positively charged proton force in the downward direction. To do that, we're going to get out our right hand. This is my right hand, okay? I have a thumb, a palm, and my fingers. The thumb is going to represent the direction of the particle. The electric field, no, the, the magnetic field is my fingers, and the force, we want the force to be down. That's my palm pushing down, and then the particle travels from right to left across my screen, and therefore, the magnetic field is going to be oriented into the page. It can't be like this, because then the force would be up. It has to be like this. We want the force to be down. And therefore, the magnetic field that we need has to be oriented into the page just like that. So that's the direction of the magnetic field. And that circle with the X in it means it's into the page. Okay, number three. Now I think we're going to calculate the magnetic field strength. Now, to calculate the magnetic field strength, we know that that particle is going to, going to go straight through. So we know the velocity of the particle which we're given is equal to the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength. Now, the electric field strength we calculated earlier as 25,000 volts per meter. And so we can just rearrange this equation and solve it for B, the magnetic field strength. And we get that that is equal to the electric field strength 
divided by the velocity. We were given, we calculated one, we were given the other. So there the magnetic field strength is 25,000 volts per meter divided by 2.0 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second for the velocity. And we get that the magnetic field strength is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas. Okay. Okay. Number four, I think, is going to be calculating the force from the electric field and the force from the magnetic field, which we call the Lorentz force. Now, we know that those two forces have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the electric force. It's the charge times the electric field strength. This is the force that we use to calculate the Lorentz force, which is just Q, the charge, times V, the velocity, times B, the magnetic field strength. And we hope that those two forces will be equal in magnitude and then they're opposite in direction. And that proton will travel straight through. Well, to calculate the electric field strength, it's 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs, because that is the charge on a proton. And we calculated the electric field strength as 2.5 times 10 to 4 volts per meter, 25,000. And we do that, we get that the electric force is 4.0 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. Okay, now let's calculate the Lorentz force. It's also the charge. It's the same particle, so it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We were given the velocities 2.0 times 10 to 7 meters per second, and we've calculated earlier the magnetic field strength as 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 teslas, and you get that, that force is also 4.0 times 10 to the minus 19 newtons. So we know that those two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, and that proton will travel straight through that velocity selector. And now we're going to figure out what if we increased the velocity of the proton would it follow the same path like that? Well, we have two equations. One is uh, the equation for the Lorentz force, and one is the equation for the electric force. You'll notice in the equation for the electric force, surprisingly, or you know, there's, there's just no velocity in there. So the velocity has no effect on the electric force. So that has no effect. But you'll notice the velocity is in here in the Lorentz force. It's QVB, V being the velocity, the velocity, the velocity. That means if we increase the velocity, we're going to increase the Lorentz force because those two values are directly proportional to each other. And when we increase the velocity, then the velocity will make the Lorentz force greater than the electric force. And that particle is going to travel in the downward direction like that. It's going to be accelerated downward. And we don't know exactly where it's going to land, if it's going to be here or here or here. It depends on how much more it is than 2.0 times 10 to 7 meters per second, but it's not going to travel straight through because of the change in the Lorentz force due to the change or increase in the velocity. Okay, last but not least, maybe the most fascinating question of them all, what if we took the proton out, which has a positive charge, and put an electron in, which has a negative charge, how would that affect the path of the particle? Now we're going to keep the strength of the fields the same, we're going to keep the velocity the same, but what is the difference between a proton and an electron? The difference is that the the, uh, the um, electron has and the proton have the exact same charge, okay, of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The mass is different. The electron has a mass that's less than the proton, and it's 2,000 times less. And let's get out our equation and see if it has any effect. You can see the charges are the same. So the charge is not going to have any effect on the force. The forces are going to be equal um, because the charges are equal, but the mass is not in there at all. So that means that the mass does not affect the Lorentz force. The mass does not affect the electric force, and therefore those particles will travel straight through that particle. That electron will travel straight through, even though it has the opposite charge and has a much less mass. Now, one of the interesting things, too, is also that if we look at the direction of the forces, they're equal in magnitude, but now they're going to be in the opposite direction as they were from the proton. And if we want to figure out the orientation, just confirm the orientation of the magnetic field again, we can use our left hand. And for the left hand rule for the negatively charged particle, we want this time the electric the, uh, Lorentz force to be up and the particle is still traveling in this same direction and the magnetic field is still oriented in the same direction into the page. Okay, so in this case, when we have the electron, 
the forces are opposite. The last time it was the electric force here and the Lorentz force here. This is the Lorentz force here, and the electric force is pointing downward. Okay? So I think that's it. That electron will go straight through. No change in the forces. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. We did all those things for the velocity selector. If you found that video helpful, please do all the following five things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should, of course, click the notifications bell so you get everything. And then you should give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends and show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.